Hey guys, Moms Against Medical Bullying. I wanted to share this article with you. I thought it was interesting. What is this? Okay. Um, Genetic fingerprints link aromatherapy spray to four cases of tropical disease in the U.S. Guys, share your thoughts with me about this, okay? Let's try to make sense out of this situation here. This is interesting. So genetic fingerprinting has linked all cases of a rare tropical disease called meliodosis, meliodosis that affected four people, I guess one person in Georgia, one person in Texas, one person in Minnesota, and one person in Kansas, and killed two of them to an aromatherapy spray sold at Walmart. I'm kind of giggling a little bit because, you know, it's like when you read these things you gotta take it with a grain of salt the u.s uh cdc said tuesday the agency asked people who might find bottles of bhg lavender and chamomile aromatherapy spray with gemstones or other scents in the same product line purchased from walmart not to throw them away or pour their contents down the drain all right so this is probably like one of them cheap cheap sprays you know probably not something that's high quality i'm guessing the bacteria that causes melodosis does not normally live in soil and water in the united states if the spray bottles end up in landfills the bacteria could become established and cause future melodosis cases in the u.s so my question is um you know how long has this product been on the shelf at Walmart and is this bacteria already in our soil being that this product probably has already been here I I don't know so that's some questions popping up in my mind also another question in my mind is did they they tested the person they did they test all four people and find that bacteria in them um And they also tested the spray. I think that it says it here. It says, instead, consumers should return them for a refund and gift card. Double bag the bottle in clean, clear zip top top bags. And place in a small cardboard box. Return the bagged and boxed product to Walmart. Wash sheets or linens that the product may have been sprayed on using normal laundry detergent. And dry completely in a hot dryer. It took months of intensive investigation to find the source of contamination when you think about the thousands of things people come in contact with around their homes it's remarkable we are were able to identify the source and confirm it in the lab how did they know all those people had this spray i mean that's pretty fascinating that they figured that out i guess said dr inger damon okay Uh, They said they found the proverbial needle in the haystack. Now the agency is trying to find out how the Burkholderia pseudomalai bacteria that causes the infection got into the spray. With the Consumer Product Safety Commission and Walmart, CDC has contacted the manufacturer in India to determine, so this comes from India, whether the ingredients from the implicated spray were used in any other products. CDC scientists are working, there we go, (laughs) to access the extent of contamination in other bottles and whether other scents may also be contaminated. How does that happen? How uh, How does that happen? I don't know. Guys, share your thoughts. Since Friday, CDC testing of an additional bottle of the spray has tested positive for the bacteria the spray was sold at 55 walmart stars on a company's website between february and october 21st the cdc says let's see so then this says burkholderia pseudomali also known as blah blah blah, is gram negative bipolar aerobic moda rod shaped bacterium Soil dwelling endemic in tropical and subtropical regions. Thailand, Northern Australia, infects humans and other animals and causes disease melodosis. Is it also capable of infecting plants? Let's see here. 
So my question is, if it's a soil-dwelling bacterium, when, you know, and, and it's endemic, why aren't people ill with this all the time? Why sometimes, or, you know what I mean, what makes people fall ill with this, you know, or is this bacteria just show up when those people have those symptoms of this disease here? It says, infectious disease caused by Burkholderia. Most people infected with this experience no symptoms. Look at that. Okay, so the bacteria is found and peep in healthy people. But those who experience symptoms have signs and symptoms that range from fever, skin changes, pneumonia, abscesses, severe inflammation, low blood pressure. About 10% of people with melodosis develop symptoms that last longer than two months. So how come some people can have this bacteria and have no symptoms? Why? Why is that? And why do some people have symptoms and have the bacteria? It says humans infected are, uh, are in contact with polluted water. So maybe in those sprays it was polluted. Um, the bacteria enter the body through wounds, inhalation, or ingestion. Okay, but not, but remember, people can have it in their body and not have any symptoms. Person to person or animal to human transmission, extremely rare. Okay. So, yeah, polluted water. Okay. The infection is constantly present in Southeast Asia, particularly in Northeast Thailand and Northern Australia. Interestingly, they don't mention India here on this uh, Wikipedia. In developed countries such as Europe and the U.S., cases of melodosis are generally imported from countries where melodosis is more common. The signs and symptoms of melodosis resemble tuberculosis, and misdiagnosis is common. Diagnosis is usually confirmed by growth of B of the bacteria from infected person's blood or other bodily fluid. Those with melodosis are treated first with intensive... Okay, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, let's see. Efforts to prevent melodosis include wearing protective gear while handling contaminated water. Practicing hand hygiene, drinking boiled water, avoiding direct contact with soil, water, or heavy rain. What do you guys think about this? Why can it? Why is it found in healthy people? Why does it cause no symptoms? And then why are some people with symptoms? They, you know, it's just. All right. Share your thoughts down below.